Jesus. Jesus is my best thing. And he's always been my best thing. Yesterday, um, when we came out of that foam party extravaganza craziness, that was just utter craziness. Please do not post video. I don't, I'm not responsible for what I did because I was drunk. I was completely schnockered. Nadia also asked me to put a disclaimer on whatever she did. She was also drunk, and so was Amanda Crab. But um, I was walking out of that party, and um, one of my girls stopped me and said, it's so funny. She's not even, she hasn't been here for a long time. <clears throat> Just a few months, I know. Um, you. <laughs> and she said she said I was telling my dad she was telling her dad about my dad that he had come to preach in my church and his name was Ramdiel and her dad said Ramdiel what and she said I didn't know so I looked it up and she said, I said, Malo, Ramdia. And her father said, Malo Ramdia from Trinidad. But here's the kicker. Everybody knows my dad who knows him as the pastor of the church in Pinal. But guess how her dad knew my dad? Her dad said, Mama, that she knew him when he was in Bible school in Calcutta Settlement, number one church. I'll tell you why that's important. Because that was my godmother's church. And her daddy said, that he used to drop her off there and drop their, her siblings off to that church. You don't get it. That's the church where at four years old. Jesus told me if you would preach for me, I'd show up every single time. So you don't even know. And you might have thought you were telling me just a story. But nobody in 44 years has ever mentioned that street to me. That's crazy. How does that happen? How does that happen four decades late? How does that happen? Only the one who loves me so. I am going to be so short. Because you all got planes to catch cars to drive, buses to take, sleep to catch up on, laundry to do. Let's, let's get real. If you got laundry, say amen. amen. Please do not catch up on your sleep during this short sermon. It might be possible because I might just cry my way through the whole thing. Or laugh, oh my goodness. I'm drunk again. I'm I, I, it's hot. Oh, hey, stand with me for a second.
man, if you can't feel him in this house, oh. <laughs> Once I decide if I'm laughing or crying, I'll let you know, but I can't tell. John 1, 26, 27 says, this is John speaking. He said, I immerse in water. If you'll find that, I'm, I'm preaching um, using the Tree of Life version of the Bible. Excuse my voice. This is all we got today. John said, I immerse in water. But among you stands, oh. John says, I baptize, I immerse in water. But among you stands one you do not know. He comes after me. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to untie. And then the next day, John sees Yeshua coming to him and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is the one I was talking about. He who comes after me is above me because he was before me. I didn't know him, but I came immersing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. And then John testified, I have seen the Ruach coming down like a dove out of heaven and it remained on him. And I didn't know him, but the one who sent me to immerse in water said to me, the one on whom you see the Ruach coming down and remaining, this is the one who immerses in the Ruach HaKodesh. And I have seen and I testify that this is Ben Elohim. That this is the Son of God. Son of God, I love you. And I need you and I love you and I love you and you're enough. You're enough and nothing I say can make you greater when you are enough so Father pour again of you pour again of you we are ready Amen if you received a word from that tree this week put your hand up good if you receive two I need you to relinquish the second word because it belongs to someone else there was only one for you on the tree because <laughs> some hands didn't go up if you didn't register you didn't have one because I didn't count you <laughs> but if you receive that word how many of you your word it got you on the oh. <laughs> girls girls listen if you didn't open that ball read your letters and shun that right there in the I don't know what's wrong with you Really, because for him to pay, you know what it is? What is the probability that every single one of us would walk right up to the right fruit and pick the right thing? Let me tell you, if you were led by the Spirit, you knew your eyes locked on the one, and he said to walk right there and pick that one. That I'm telling you. Oh. And that word is yours, but I'm telling you mine. Okay, this was, my, this was my word. His word to me was, and your life will be joy and peace because your mind has been stayed 
on me. That's it. That's all I needed and that's all I got. And it's so good. It's so good for me. Sit. Oh. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Okay, first things first, look at us. We look like we were under steamrollers. My, I was coming down the stairs this morning and my mom literally laughed at me. She laughed at me and I said, I'm very hurt like, Mom, are you laughing at me? And you know what she said? Yes. She said, you look like you just rolled out of the bed. So I put these heels on. This weekend has been an immersion weekend. I have loved every minute with every single one of you. I've seen good things and bad things. And you know, among us, we can't tell, but there are some of us who really are struggling, right? Or we came in here struggling. And even if the Lord has done something in the spirit, we're still broke. And, and even though we have been immersed and we've been changed and some of us have been healed, there's still aspects of our lives that are still in pieces and still shattered. And you still get to go back home to the dysfunction and you still get to go back home to the worry and the stress and the realities of life because those things don't disappear. Right? Anybody here? Everything all good? Not a one of us, just one of us. Well, you look at your, I mean... Other than that, every single one of us, we have an issue and we have stuff that we have to go back to. It's going to stare us. Oh, my gosh. It's going to stare us in the face. You know what happened to me today? And why is everything an object lesson from God? Okay, so this happened. It could be because I'm tired, Jude. But um, this morning, I, I, I got out of the shower. And I was walking and, and my eyes were closed and I was drying my face like this. And I stopped in front of a mirror, but I didn't know that. I thought I stopped in front of a door, like maybe four feet. I was actually half an inch away from a mirror and I couldn't feel the mirror and I'm drying my face. And then I went like this, stared right into my eyes and screamed bloody murder. <laughs> like, I don't know if you ever had such a fright. Oh, like, who is this in my room? And it was me. No, it was so intense. I was like, Kurt, you know what happened? I had to share it because I'm like, it's either I'm in another body, in another dimension, and I don't know what's going on in reality, but this was terrifying. I felt my heart rate. I ran to get my Apple Watch to see what the beats were because it was bad. But... After this whole thing, you get to go home and look at yourself again. And you get to stare at yourself. And what you see is probably going to scare you. What you see and what you hear and who you have to deal with and, and the circumstances of your life are probably going to shake you. And it would be a real shame if we just had a great weekend. It would be an intense shame to me. Because I didn't invite you here so we could hoop and holler and dance and foam. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. I was, I was hoping and praying and fasting and seeking God that when you left here, the person who went in the water would stay and the person who came out of the water would be different. Because something happens after immersion and it's not just you get wet. Because we did that. We did the immersion of baptism. We all went through that water at one point or another. Some of you yesterday and some of us many times before. But that's not the baptism that we came to preach about. There is an immersion. I think that the one thing that we forget about Jesus, most of all, we know him as Adonai and Messiah and he's Yeshua and he's all the things. But I, I think we forget that the most important thing, and it was mentioned in all four gospels, by the way. This is important. In all four gospels, in fact, in all four gospels in the very first chapter, except Matthew 3. 11, Mark 1, 8, Luke 3, 16, John 1, 33. It calls Jesus something very particular. Whew. And this weekend, I was hoping and I pray that he has revealed himself that way to you. John said, I baptize with water, but there's one who's coming after me who is also an immerser. 
Jesus is an immerser. I need you to know that. Every time you see the word baptize in the uh, somebody. Every time you see the word baptize in the Bible, it is the word immerser. There is no variation. It is not sprinkler. It is not toucher. It is not wetter. It is immerser. In other words, Jesus is an immerser. He is a cover up with water kind of God. But the Bible says that he is not just an immerser with water, but he is the immerser. There is one coming after me who is going to baptize you. He is going to immerse you in the Ruach HaKodesh. This is different friend listen the world waited for him you don't get this the world waited to be baptized in the ruach they knew him by the way they knew the ruach abraham knew the ruach the bible said that when the spirit of the lord came down abraham prostrated himself and he bowed his head to the ground there is always a response to the immerser when he comes in Two weeks ago, I went to a waterfall and it was so high. It was so magnificent, right? And nobody wanted to go in the waterfall with me because it was also very, very cold. And this is something I noticed about a waterfall. The higher it is, the harder the water is going to hit you. It's true. If it's a little trickle, and I've been to that one too. If it's a six inch waterfall, it's not going to touch you. But if you're talking a hundred feet in the air, when you get underneath that water, the water starts to bend you over. And nobody wanted to go. But I, there was something in that water that was just drawing me. And I said, I got to go in. I don't know if I'm going to make it because the torrents were so big, weren't they, Nadia? But I told Nadia, I said, watch for me. I got to get underneath the falling water. And I put my, I see about it. You remember how this works. Ruthie, when I put my head underneath the water, I felt like it was going to knock me over. But I steadied myself. Because right behind that water, there was a big old rock. As long as my hands were on the rock, just like this, I could feel the water just falling upon my head. And I'm telling you, it took about half a second. And I was drenched from head to toe. Yesterday I said to you, there are two kinds of immersions. One is the one that you step into. But the other one is the one that falls upon you. Something in our lives shifts the way that we look at the same stuff we see in the mirror every day. And that's what I'm hoping happens. I hope that when we leave here today, we look at the same issue, at the same dysfunction, at the same problem, at the same lack. But we look at it through different eyes this time. I'm looking at you. But you ain't making me scream no more. Oh, I could look in that mirror and what I see is not an offense to me anymore. What I see does not frighten me anymore because I learned that I can do all things. Because I've been baptized, I've been immersed, and not by the water, but by the spirit of the living God. He is the Ruach HaKodesh. John said, I came baptizing. I came immersing. But I didn't come to immerse you so that you could be forgiven. He said, I came to immerse you, to point you to somebody else. I only came to immerse you so I could introduce you to the one who will baptize you. Let me tell you, this is so important. Well, Jesus came to die, Pastor. Jesus came to, to suffer. Jesus came to heal. What Jesus really came to do was to introduce an immersion. That's why he came. In fact, he said, listen, it's better for you if I leave. 
He told the disciples, he said, as much as I want to stay with you, it's going to be better for you if I leave you and I go because I'm going to send you something. I'm going to send you someone. I'm going to send you a baptism. There is one who I will send you. He said, I know you like me here, but let me go because I have an arbon for you. Short, three short points. It is the privilege of the immersed to encounter the immerser himself. Okay, first things first. It is the privilege of only the immersed to encounter, I should say, to encounter with recognition the immerser himself. John sees Jesus coming. But John's posture is very significant. When John sees Jesus coming, John is not mending nets, earning money, cooking lunch. When John sees Jesus coming, he's in the water. When John sees the immerser coming, he is in the process of immersing. So it is the privilege of the immerser of those who will lead others into the cleansing water and for those who would say come I have living water it is the privilege of the immerser to recognize the John says look look behold behold like Devin said the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world why John though? Why everybody else was there. The disciples knew him. All of them. Everybody had declarations about who he was. But John was different. Why? Because John was immersed. John was the immerser. He was in the water. You know how I know? Because Jesus walked into the Jordan to meet him. Jesus took a line like everybody else. He got in line. I, I'm telling look, look, I can imagine Jesus. I don't know about you, right? But that you see that phone party last night? And if you didn't do the phone party, I hope you did the, the, um, uh, the planetarium. At least you lay on the floor and watch the stars a bit. <clears throat> in the dance studio. I don't know about you, but those plastic flip-flops that we put outside the pool for you <clears throat> or the the hours that we hung those balls on those trees and still I mean borrowed those trees <laughs> to make that beautiful tree for you it's not stealing if nobody wants it or is it all I wanted really was to provide something for you that would make you feel amazing. I wanted you to feel so loved and, and so in tune with who Jesus is. I wanted you to fall in love with Jesus. You know why I played this song, Can't Help Falling in Love With You? Because if every one of these things didn't draw you into his heart, didn't remind you that he went to prepare a place for you, didn't say, come daughter, you deserve a feast. Come daughter, you deserve an emotion. Come daughter, you deserve to see what I created when I flung the stars out in space and I made the galaxies and I named them all. Every star I know by name, but I also know the number of hairs on your head. I know everywhere that you're going to walk and everywhere that you've ever been. I knew you since you were in your mama's belly. I knew you before I put you in your mother's belly. I want you to fall in love with him. I wanted, I wanted you to, to take a gaze into his face. And this morning the Lord had to show me something. He's saying, he's saying to me, is he self-indulgence? And self of any kind is going to terrify us. I looked into my own eyes and almost died of a heart attack. Because sometimes this is all I cared about. Yeah, sometimes it's all about this. And if the Lord didn't make me lose my makeup four times this weekend. Like everything I did, it just kept slipping off my face. 
every time and he was trying to say something to me he was saying underneath this in the authenticity of you that's the part I'm in love with that's the part that draws me to you the no preacher girl the no pastor the no title the no nothing just come like I made you come before me stripped and bare and naked and then I know you It is the privilege of the immersed to encounter the immerser himself. Is the immersion is not, I, I want to read it like I read it. Immersion is a come here call. It's not a go there call. Immersion is always a come here call. So when God calls you to immersion, he's not ever saying, I want you to go there and do this. He's saying, I want you to come here and do this. Immersion is always a call. It is never a send. And to immerse you means to come. That's why Jesus stood in the marketplace. And you know what he said? He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then you know what he said? He said, come and drink. Come and drink. You don't need to bring any money. Just come like you are, and I'll give you rivers. That's what he told the woman at the well. He was saying something the whole time. Can you imagine his whole life? He's walking around his whole life thinking, I'm here to baptize. I'm here to immerse them. I'm here to pour out on them. That's who he is. I, I, my one regret is I didn't write immerser. Because it's his fault. He only gave me this word last night. <laughs> because, because I want to be immersed. And he said to me, but do you know I am the immerser? I, and I thought the Holy Spirit is the baptizer. But Jesus is the immerser in the Holy Spirit. Jesus is also in He is the doer and the Holy Spirit is the water. He said, come and I will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. But you don't get to sit, Abaya. You don't get to step into the Spirit. The Spirit in a toe first experience. It's a cannonball experience the Holy Spirit is not a test the water experience the Holy Spirit is you stand there and let me flow over you like the sound of the waterfalls like the rushing of many waters you don't even have to try wonder why his voice is like the sound of many waters The only time you can hear the sound of many waters is in a waterfall. You can't hear a thing. When you're underneath the water, you can't hear the sound of many waters. You can hear the sound of nothing. When you're by the ocean, you can't hear the sound of many waters. You can hear the sound of wave after wave. But when the water is rushing over you, you know what you hear? You hear a roar. You hear a roar that your brain can't even comprehend. It's all your senses at once. You can feel it. You can see it. You can hear it. You can taste it. You can touch it. All of it is right there. And in the middle of that is you. And you have no power against it. No power against him. I don't want to have the power against him. You know when I hear people say, well, you know, speaking in tongues doesn't take you to heaven. I agree, it doesn't. Right? But what? You know, it's, I don't think Holy Ghost is an option. If Jesus came here for one purpose, to immerse you in the Holy Spirit, why on earth would you not want what Jesus came here to give you? You want Jesus, but you don't want the gift that he came here to give you. Jesus came to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Hey, this is a thing. He was doing that since the beginning. He's taking the people. Every baptism is a baptism into something. I don't know if you know that, but this is what it said. It said that the Hebrews, by the way, when they crossed the Red Sea, they were baptized into Moses. That's what the scripture said. We think they were baptized into salvation, but no, they were baptized into Moses. If you need scripture, I got it. I don't know it by heart, but I wrote it down. Every baptism is a baptized. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 2. 
It was Paul that said it. The Israelites were immersed into Moses in the Red Sea. There it is. And then Acts in Acts chapter 19 and verse 3. He said, into what were you immersed? And they said, into John's immersion. Everybody had an immersion. So apparently, you get baptized into the one that you're following. I wonder why he said, come follow me. And I'll make you fishes. I wonder if he said, if any man should come after me, he has to deny himself and take up his cross and go his own way uh -uh, and follow me. Because the one you are baptized into is the one that you follow all the rest of your life. And somebody told me this morning, I have decided to fall. In fact, I saw Cecilia singing it on her Instagram, halfway singing. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Is it? anybody here decided have you decided because you've been baptized into the Ruach HaKodesh I want you to know it ain't no ordinary baptism Galatians 3 and 27 says for all of you who were immersed into Messiah see have clothed yourself with Messiah hey the baptism of the spirit Hmm. will lead you to a name change. We learned to this, this weekend, we heard a lot about intimacy. We heard about entering to the door of fellowship, unassuming, unclothed, bare, to have time with God. We also learned that fruitfulness comes from intimacy. <clears throat> Remember that? And if you're not married, you're not supposed to even know what I'm talking about. You only see it on TV and read it in books. Those books. I want, do kids still read books? Okay. I bet you it's only the bad kinds. <laughs> She's like, maybe so. <clears throat> you guys, all you old ladies with your Mills and Boone and Sweet Valley High. I know you. No, I've never read one. But my mom he used to read them. Just kidding. There is intimacy in three main areas of your life. And intimacy is really a very private, private, private moment. To be intimate, and I don't know if you heard into me see, that's so kitschy. Into me see. <clears throat> but intimacy is really a privacy moment. Sorry, I just, it's like when people stretch things like that. It worked, it worked. Um, one is birth. How many of you would like to go into the birthing room and put your camera right there? Sorry if I'm inappropriate, but. <laughs> Say, Doc, hold that up there while this baby comes out. Okay, there are people doing that crap nowadays. Yeah, online, because they, everybody got to see your, your, anyway. But most of us normal women, we're not into that. Maybe your mom and your husband, most likely just your husband can go in when you're birthing. Why? Because it's a very intimate time. And trust me, if you didn't need the doctor, you wouldn't even have the doctor there. And most of you would rather your husband don't be there, just the doctor. But since he feel like he's an active participant, then he needs to be there. While what? While you sweat and while he watches this thing stretch to the size of a watermelon, get all freaked out, probably throw up. My mom's looking at me like, did I not teach you a thing? <laughs> it is not an attractive sight. And the worst part is when somebody's got to hike your leg up for you. Because you can't keep it. The little girls are like, what? <laughs> Look, trust me, you'll figure it out one day. All I can say, it's never been an attractive thing. No matter what Beyonce try to make you feel. And no matter if Carmi had some great African music in there, Carmi handled that like a boss. Most women, not so good. No matter how beautiful we try to make it, it's a beautiful thing to have a baby. Of course it is, but it's not, it's not a public thing. It's very private. The next private thing is actual intimacy between a husband and a wife. 
That's also something that most of us normal humans don't want the whole world watching. And again, the devil takes those both types of intimacy and makes it feel public in order for people to get accolades and money. And I'm telling you, it's why it sells. Because it's meant to be a private thing. So the minute you expose what is meant to be private, Satan will start throwing mammon at it, will start throwing cash at it, and cause you to sell what God meant for you to keep for yourself. It's also a very private intimate thing and the third thing is death those three things when you are on your dying bed you don't want the whole world watching we don't see a whole lot of videos with people's last breath but who's there the ones you love your most important person your most important people you want them to hear your last dying words it's a very intimate moment it's more intimate than a funeral the last breath the first breath and all them labored breaths in between. <laughs> you figure that out. <laughs> this is my mom's first conference. <laughs> <laughs> but immersion, immersion into Jesus is always, listen, an invitation to intimacy. Immersion is always an invitation to intimacy. If you leave this place here and you do not become intimate, more intimate with God, you've gotten your invitation and you didn't use it. Every single thing we've planned have been, has been intentional to get you to an intimate place with God. It wasn't to fix your crap and, and, and make a miracle out of your mess. It was to get you into the secret place. It was to get you into a moment where you and God could come face to face. Where the mirrors don't reflect you, but you reflect him. Where he stares into the deep parts of you and you stare into the deep parts of him. Where the crushing is not offensive to you because you know he's squeezing new wine out of you I know that some of you got there and if you didn't it's not too late because I need you to know that immersion is an invitation to intimacy and I told you the three intimate moments in your life are birth are sex and death those are they hear what Romans 6 and 3 says but do you not not know that all of us who are immersed into Messiah Yeshua are immersed into his death. Listen. If you are baptized into Yeshua, you were baptized into his death. In other words, he said, come to my most private moment. Get in here with me because the immersion in the Ruach HaKodesh is an invitation. In fact, it's so intimate. I heard this, my dad said that in India, that they still do it sometimes, that these brides, when their husbands die, some of them throw themselves on the pyre. They throw themselves on the fire because they want to be buried with him. And some of them jump into the coffins and to be buried with him. You know the Romeo and Juliet thing? When she and him make a pact and they decide they're going to die together. And then he, she does and he decides he changed his mind. <laughs> Hear what verse 4 of Romans 6 says. Therefore, we were buried together with him. Through immersion into death. Now when we baptize you in water, we say this is a death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. But that's not what this is talking about. When you are baptized into Jesus, immersed into Yeshua, you are immersed into his death. And therefore, we were buried together with him unto death. This is, and this happens in the, the, the public act of baptism is what about this is happening in the spirit. Here, this is not all. In order that just as Messiah was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so too you would walk in a new birth so we have the death and you have the birth for and guess what's the other thing the sex or is that 
What do they say about marriage? The marriage is a joining of a man and a woman, and the two become? Verse 5. For if we have become joined together in the likeness of his death, certainly we will be joined together in the newness of his life. Immersion is always an invitation to intimacy. Why do you want intimacy with God? Why do you want intimacy with Christ? If there's anybody sitting next to you right now that's not bearing fruit like we talked about, not bearing fruit of the Spirit, they think they do, but it doesn't matter if you can dance. It really don't even matter if you can sing. It really doesn't even matter if you can preach. None of that matters. What matters is that you're bearing fruit. And how do you bear fruit? You have sex. Intimacy. The fruit of the Spirit is not a forced thing. The fruit of the Spirit is what comes naturally on the outside because something's happening on the inside. The fruit of the Spirit, when the tree bears the fruit, it's not trying. It's not saying, okay, today I'm going to bear fruit. No, it doesn't. It just bears fruit because that's the seed that it has. As long as that seed contains that DNA for that fruit, that fruit's going to pop out when a due season comes along. And the Bible says that if the Spirit of the Lord dwells in you, then in due season, you will bear the fruit of the? Wait, if you have a child for your husband, you have the son of Jason, right? If you have, you have the fruit of Jason, if you have the fruit of the Spirit, if you have the fruit of the Spirit, then this is fruit that is born of the Spirit. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if the Spirit does not live in you, it is impossible for you to bear the fruit of the Spirit. No, you can have a fake fruit. You can have plastic grapes, but you can't have the real thing because the fake stuff is... In Watch, let me show you how a fake stuff works. If you put this on the internet, I'm going to just keep. If I showed up and you saw me like this, oh, and I had the waddle and everything. And when I'm going to go sit, I'm like, oh, blah. Oh, hot, hot. Whew. Honey. Honey, I need ribs. <laughs> Honey, pickles and peanut butter. <laughs> Honey, rub my back. <laughs> no, we got Christians doing this nonsense. <laughs> Acting like you're full of the spirit. <laughs> Acting like you about to bear fruit. You see, we know all the motions. We can look like it. We can act like it. We can talk like it. We can demand things from the honey. But if it ain't real, if there's no seed in there, if that seed hasn't been fertilized, if that thing isn't being incubated, if that fruit isn't growing on the inside of you, I don't care how Christian you look. I don't care how immersed you look. I don't care how pregnant you look. In nine months, ain't nothing coming out of there. That's alive. Why would we settle for this? Why would we do this? It is a deceptive thing. You deceive your own self when you do this. When you act pregnant and you're not pregnant. When you, de you, you pretend. Oh yeah. What are you doing? Why fake it? When the real Ruach HaKodesh is in the house. 
why make it up when he said ask of me and I will send my spirit to you when he said I came to immerse you it's why Jesus walked on the planet it's why he came I need you to hear this yes he was to, to get your salvation but even if he saved you without the Ruach HaKodesh without this thing it ain't legal Arbon, wedding ring, engagement ring. It is the word for the Holy Spirit. John said he's two things. He's a seal and he's a guarantee. He's a seal and he's a guarantee. What is he a seal of? He's a seal of a letter that said this woman belongs to Jesus. There is my seal and nothing is ever going to break that seal. And he's a guarantee. That I go to prepare a place for you and if I go, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Holy Spirit put the ring on it. See when you're walking around this way and the ring ain't there. And this ain't to make nobody feel bad. This is to say things just ain't all the way right. It's saying that it's a way for, you know, the enemy wants to tell you every night you go home condemned after church. And I'm not talking about this kind of pregnancy. I'm talking about when you come in here faking Holy Ghost. You go home and feel like a fraud. That's why what you got is only temporary. Because if this belly was shaped right, I could have fooled everybody. Yeah, they have real bellies that look really real. Oh, some people got real Holy Ghost, a real Christian. But you know when you know if they're a real Christian? When the labor starts. When it's time to work. When the push. When they gotta pray until something happens. When they got to get on their face in a fetal position. When they think they want to give up. And God says now ain't the time to give up. In fact, you got to push and you got to breathe. And you got to make sure that things get in blood. And you got to make sure that things get in air. Breathe, daughter. Breathe. You wonder why he's called the breath of God. Ruach is breath. Pull out my belly. Thank you, Jesus. I've been delivered. <laughs> Intimacy will lead to real fruit. Okay. I'm going to give you a one on one and I'm done. Here's the one on one everybody needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But you've made it a step in. And it's not. A step in it's not a go there it's a come hither yes. Holy Spirit is always a call well pastor I tried I've been seeking God for 27 years and I still never spoke in tongues let me give you a clue when a baby comes out they slap its butt if it's not making a noise <laughs> I'm gonna let that revelation sink in She brings out the absolute worst in me. <laughs> best, best. <clears throat> you know why? Fruits make noise. They do. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It ain't never, ever, ever going to happen. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says that spirit is for those who are thirsty. Unless you have an ivy... If you want to drink, you got to open your mouth. I don't care if you stand up there going, ah. Sometimes when you're laboring, that's all that comes out. <laughs> ah, that's it. But you got to make a sound, bro. I mean, daughter, sister, you have it. You got to drink. You got to open your mouth. And let me tell you, this is the exact way when I. <laughs> you guys have in labor memories. When somebody comes up and they're really struggling to, to receive the Holy Spirit, 100% of the time, this is how I, I tell them. Because I realize this person really wants to do this. 
But you see, there are two things that happens before that baby comes out, right? There's a mucus plug that has to come out. <clears throat> Clear your throat. <clears> throat. That's your mucus plug. Just get it out. <laughs> but then your water breaks. When the water breaks, that's your sign. When you see water, <laughs> you know it's time for fruit. If there ain't no water, the fruit's going to die. The seed needed the water in the first place. But if that seed even got to maturity inside of you, but the water was absent, that seed would die in your belly. And a lot of people with great talent and great abilities and great anointings die with that fruit in their belly. That thing never comes up to pass. You've had it. You've run the race. You've got to the point where it's supposed to be birthed into the earth and to the kingdom. And it never comes to pass. Why? No water. Dryness. Dryness. It'll die. But that's your sign. When the water's coming out, it's time. That fruit's about... And, and, Lois, it's never a pleasant thing, girl. Just before, you know how that feels? It feels like your whole life is just coming out. It feels like you will die in the process of birthing what God is trying to do through you. This is not going to be worth it. Is how you feel. So I tell the people when they come up, I said, I want you to, to open your mouth. And if they're kids, this is what they do, literally. And then they watch their neighbor. <laughs> you see that, right? Yes. But that's okay. Because as long as their mouth is open. And then I say, now make a song. Now the mucus plug really isn't the mucus. I'll tell you what that is in the spirit. When there's, there's a stopper. And it lives right here. See this mind? And we talked about it this weekend. Yeah, stop it. He's talking about membranes right now. So, this mind is a thing that stops the drink. It stops because in most people who never become filled with the Holy Spirit, it gets stopped right here. He gets stopped right here because you have to process him through this finite mind. It is impossible to process an infinite God in a finite mind. Your brain will stand in the way every single time. The plug has got to go and you're like, well, what am I doing with my mind? It's there. Shut it off. You give God permission to bypass that and let this mind, which was in Christ Jesus, be also in you who was God and was now in the form of man and who didn't count it robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation. You're scared that when people hear you saying funny things, you will lose your reputation. But he who was God wasn't even afraid to lose his reputation to hang naked on a tree for me. So let that mind be in you. Let them say, wait, I thought she was a teacher. Oh, it don't matter because I'm a teacher that's filled up with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I say, open your mouth and let something come out. Ah, good enough for me. Good enough for me. Because as long as you can get that mind out of the way. That's why Jesus said, by the way, this is a renewal thing. This is a renewed mind. You got to do that every day. Because when you go home, your mind's going to tell you, oh, that wasn't him. That was all you. But you're like, no, 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 no. I'm going to renew this mind. I'm going to crank this up again. And tomorrow, my mind's going to be set on things above again. I know that today, my mind might be bogged down. But wait. Jesus had a one-track mind. The Lord gave me a word. He said to me this year, I'm going to have a focus. I'm going to have a, a, a determined laser focus. 
And so since the day he gave me the word, I've been asking him, what am I focusing on? Because I want to find it so I can put my eyes on it. And he said, you just focus on having my mind. That's it. My mind. Let this mind, which was in Christ Jesus, also be in you. Let this mind, which was in Christ Jesus, also be in you. I want to think like Jesus. I want to think like him. I want to talk like him. I want to walk like him. I want to act like him. I want to love like him. I want to live like him. And I will die like him. Let this mind, which was also in Christ Jesus, be in you. And then I say to them, and I'm telling you what I tell them so that you who are not yet baptized in the Ruach HaKodesh, that you've come to be immersed today. I promise you. And that is the most exciting thing for me. Of all the things, that is the most exciting thing. Why? Because Jesus was the immerser in the Ruach HaKodesh. So if you become immersed in the spirit today, we've done the work of Jesus. And why are we here? I came to do the will of him who sent me. So now I say, ask him. And then they say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And then they start going, hallelujah, Jesus. I'm like, no, 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 just shh. And then, because some people think you have to fill the silence with whistles. You don't. You don't. You get nervous. <clears throat> but every time you feel you have to fill the silence with words, it's because you think that this depends on you. It doesn't depend on you. It doesn't depend on me. It depends on him. He will fill whom he fills. He said, you ask me. And now you open your mouth and drink. And let the sound come out. And they'll start making a sound. And then before you know it, that jaw starts doing a thing. As long as they have the ability to let that mind push it to the back, that jaw starts to shake all by itself. Maybe they just start with a rap, ba, 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 and then. And then when they're done with the loud part, most of them want to fall. You know why people fall when that happens? Because they don't want us to hear them. So they turn on themselves. Okay, maybe not. But some people do that because they're scared of what they hear. So they're like, I'm going to go down on the ground and lie down. It's so much easier. <laughs> so this is what I ask you to do. After you speak in tongues for the first time like that, do it again quietly. Because intimacy and that quiet thing, you have to be able to speak to him do you understand when a baby says its first words? How amazing that is. Daddy wants it to be dada. Mommy wants it to be mama. And he's saying ball. <laughs> what will happen when you get immersed? The baptism of the spirit was for the most important thing, which I've told you a million times to make us one. If you feel like you're on the outside looking in, probably your baptism is like a pillow. Because once you are baptized in the Ruach HaKodesh, you see people differently. You're able to love people who are unlovable. The fruit, that's what love is. You can't love unless you've experienced hate. You can't have joy unless you know what it is to be miserable. You can't have peace unless somebody's trying to make war with you. And that's how you bear the fruit, right? So maybe if you constantly making enmity between somebody and somebody else, and between yourself and somebody, maybe you're wearing a pillow. <clears throat> we are baptized. There, there's a scripture that says that, that we are baptized by the Spirit. And that by the Spirit is, is a, a mistranslation. The actual Greek word is in the Spirit, Right? It's in him. Peter could always speak. But when the baptism comes on you, the last thing that happens is the only way I could describe it is, is dynamite. Because that's what dunamis is. The actual word for the power of the Holy Ghost is dunamis, which is power. And that's where we get the word dynamite from. And why is that necessary? Let me tell you something. When somebody gets filled up with the Holy Spirit, you cannot stop them. 
Jesus said, I will give you power to be my witnesses. That means if your family aren't listening to the word of God that's coming out of your mouth, maybe it's time to get to get some dynamite why is that necessary because some people have hearts of stone when there is water behind a rock there's only one way to get to that water when there is a blockage when there is a dam when people are trying to take down a stumbling wall when there's something that's stopping people's access to water and when you go to a third world country and there is water on the other side of a big mountain they do not show up with a straw they do not show up with a shovel or a brush they show up with some c4 they show up with some dynamite and they put some holes in that rock and they blow that thing up and once it's gone the water starts pouring out you see Peter was always a talker I heard some people say when he got filled with the Holy Ghost he started to talk uh -uh. he was always a talker he was always saying things but something shifted on the day that the Ruach came down like a waterfall Peter came out Jesus had been risen from the dead for 50 days and nobody knew. Wow. Only the disciples knew. Nobody else knew. But on that day, that dynamite came down from heaven. Peter comes out and he says, men and brethren, these are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that which was prophesied in the last days. I will pour. I will pour. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And the same man who could only talk crap before and the same man who had no power all of a sudden got 3,000 people to say yes what happened dunamis that's what ruach hakodesh does he said this is why you will be witnesses unto me don't try to witness without the ruach don't try to be his witness without the immersion you know why jesus was excited about being the immerser because once he baptized you, you would tell everybody about him. He knew the world that he died for would be saved. That's why we're here at Immersed. Not so that you'd get filled up, but that you'd get poured out on. And that whatever drenched you and filled you up and consumed you would be so much that the next time you open your mouth I feel that on you stand up here come here come here Pastor Denise come Pastor Amanda put your hand lift your hands Fabi I just heard the spirit of the Lord say about her that he's going to open a waterfall of witness he said a waterfall of witness. Come sis, a waterfall of witness. A waterfall of witness. Do you know what that means? That means that she will open her mouth. And wait, that makes sense, doesn't it? That makes sense because Pastor Jason sat in her chair one day. And when she got saved, her boss got saved. And now her boss is a youth pastor at Hope FLA. Let me tell you something. But God's saying what you are about to do, what God is about to do through you is to take what was just a, a swimming pool and drag you underneath the waterfall. So come, daughter. If you are in here, we are done. But if you are not yet baptized with the Ruach HaKodesh, you might have got a glass full. You might have stepped in the swimming pool of his spirit. You might have shunned out one time, two times. But you know there's more. There's a difference when you put your... Uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys have a, any of those photos about that waterfall, but there's a thing. Uh, 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 there's the power that comes down when you put your hand upon the rock to stabilize yourself uh, and then just let the water hit you. I'm telling you, you wondered why people thought they were drunk because when I came out of that waterfall, uh, I couldn't even find my footing. Uh, I was falling all over the place uh, because just the sheer power of what was falling on me took my balance off that's why everybody thinks that you're drunk when the spirit of the Lord comes he is real I just want somebody to know he is real all the big stuff you see on TV you don't have to become a skeptic because of them taste and see God he tricked us he said oh taste and see Jude he said, taste. He said, we just tasted because he knew that the taste would drown us. And he knew that once I tasted and I saw 
that I'd never ever be the same again. I'd be like the woman at the well who tasted the water and ran back and became a witness and said, come and see a man. Come see a man. Preacher girl, if there's anybody and you need that kind of baptism, that kind of immersion, the immersion of the Ruach HaKodesh, like a waterfall, I want you to come up. If you already are there, you wait. But if you're not, today is your day. Run up here. Just the way we want to get in. Just the excited way we want to encounter. I want us to differentiate ourselves really clearly. So if this is you, what you're about to receive is not going to depend on me. And fear not, it's not going to depend on you. It's going to depend on the water. As long as it's his thing, it's a guaranteed thing. I'm going to tell you the honest thing. I could go to churches that have the biggest stages, the best singers, the most produced services, the most incredible resources. And if the Ruach is there in limited quantities, my soul doesn't leave satisfied. I feel like I had a good tall drink of water, refreshed. But I didn't come here for that. I came here to get drunk. I'm like that drink all night girl. Yeah, I want to get so snockered out that I don't know who I am by the time I'm done. In fact, I think I'm him. He thinks he's me and we're one. That's kind of how I want to leave this place. I want my family to see it. I want my friends to see it. I want people to see the joy, the dynamite. Girl, you'll be walking around spazzing because all you got is a fill up of the Holy Spirit. That's why we can say in him we live and move.